Moin. I'm in bed with Ryan O'Reilly. Again, 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 again. 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 Yeah, keeps keep happening. Keeps happening. <laughs> That's so nice. Okay, to be honest, we're doing two of those videos yeah. in, in a row now. A as, row. You, as you can see from the setting, we, we're wearing the same clothes. Oh, well, that, that, that could have been staged. It could have been, yeah. It could have been staged. No, but... We, we, are, we are honest about this. It's true. That's true. And as we told in the last video, you, you are currently on a solo tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in yeah. Germany. Perfect. I'm, I'm somewhere else. I'm going to put the links to the tour in the description. You can check it out. You can also check out the music sessions we did. Um, and now we're going to talk about Let the Right One In. And we have like several languages and what's what what's yours called so finster die nacht yeah that's german and i have the swedish one lots then rette comma in perfect why did you choose this one um i've always loved vampire books not necessarily the uh, the later adaptations of the vampire legends <laughs> but the um but <laughs> certainly bram stoker's dracula was uh, was something i was always very interested in and um in Sweden, spent a lot of time in Sweden and uh, and touring around and yeah, this um, was always just a, a, well, it was actually the film I saw first okay. in Swedish. I couldn't bring myself to watch the American remake because yeah. it's just so annoying that they have to remake everything. Yes. Um, yeah, the film the film was great and it just a, a sort of a different aspect that had a lot of the um, the the traditions. Um, of, of the vampire legend so I was always interested in it cool um, can you sum up the story in one sentence um, a bullied boy falls in love with a, a a 12 year old vampire in um, in 80s Stockholm mm -hmm. in a council estate and um, yeah yeah um of this one, what was the book about for you on a pure subjective personal level? Um, I guess being an outsider um, through no no choice of your own um, and a kind of godless mater um, modernity uh, where you have very sort of soulless places um, that actually inspire quite a banal evil um, mm -hmm. but even within evil some humanity exists so it's kind of a, um, yeah it's that sort of Miltonian um, concept of giving a person a, a, a personality that's um, that you kind of root for the devil mm -hmm. um, yeah. and you know vampires come from the devil so it's so the fact that you like Eli and you want her to survive is exactly what Milton does in, in Paradise Lost. Lost yeah. So. yeah. We're right on one of my top questions for this book because for me it was so amazing that at a very early stage, because you like sympathize with Eli, you accept that people have to die mm -hmm. because she has to feed. And I thought it was so interesting how Lindquist got me to vote for who should die. Did you did you experience a similar thing that you were starting to vote for people? So okay, if someone has to die, then this person should die. Yeah. Um, well, obviously the the bullies uh, who who are bullying Oscar, you you want them to die, and. Um, and then the people, the alcoholics in the in the Chinese restaurant, they have no. Their lives are so stagnant and dead. It's actually only when all the the bad stuff starts happening that um, that they become alive in a way that yeah. they, they suddenly say, "Oh, we have to do something. We have to figure something out." But really, their their lives are are dead through alcoholism and sort of just bleak, the bleakness of their surroundings. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I found that so interesting that, that he got me like mm. this, yeah. Um, did you identify with any of the characters? Well, I guess it's hard not to identify with Oscar. Everyone has that experience of, of feeling a bit hunted at school to a lesser or greater degree. Everyone has some embarrassing moment. And in, in the book, more so than, than in the film, he is sort of... Um, 
vulnerabilities are mm. are embarrassing and desperately need to be hidden and um so i think you know anyone that's gone to to school yeah yeah what did you really like about the book i i like lots of aspects of the book i um uh the descriptions of of the uh, the great ideals for the new modern council blocks that they were going to build in mm -hmm. the 60s all across Europe and then how they just oh and it's, it's great at the start because um, obviously it doesn't get around to this in, in the film but it describes how they f forget to build a church there mm -hmm. so the presence of of God and, and good is completely replaced by nothing and there's a great line where he says they they didn't even notice evil move in because no one talked about good and evil anymore. Um, Eli is, is a, a really compelling character um, from the very first moment she's introduced, stood on top of the the children's playing ground, um, jungle gym. It's like this sort of innocence disguising evil. Yeah. It's all, always the most um, terrifying evil is personified within um, the things that are supposed to be the most innocent and the most sort of nurturing or loving in, in sort of you know germ, German fairy tales it would be mm -hmm. like the evil mother um, jealous you know jealous mother doing something awful or um, and this is a, it's a jealous it's a evil child and um, yeah. even though she doesn't want to be evil evil Exactly. I mean, she's she's she's, she's per se. Yeah. She just has to feed, and yeah, she's exactly. per se not not. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's a lie and yeah. evil, but it's still maybe not. That's, that's where it becomes really interesting. interesting. So lots of yeah, yeah it's, it's really entertaining. Was there anything that annoyed you? In the book, there's a um, there's a sort of sub plot storyline involving Tommy and and his mother meeting with a detective which they completely cut out of the film mm -hmm. and I think that it was right to do so it kind of didn't really add that much and sort of every time I was reading about Tommy and his relationship with, with his new stepfather I kind of didn't care mm. um, yeah. so only that yeah, really okay. um, we're going to spoil a little bit here but not too much I think um What did you think about the gender twist? There's a gender twist in, in the novel that I think doesn't get that much attention in the film. I, I talked to a lot of people who didn't get, get it in the no, film at she, all. No, she says in the film, But, would, you know, would you love me if I wasn't a girl? And that's the only thing that they talk about. They in, talk about in the book, he has weird um, sort of flashbacks inside her memory when they kiss and she's basically a eunuch boy from it goes like 200 years back in the past which obviously doesn't happen in the film and they're at a grand feast and um, and she's singled out or he's singled out and they castrate him so he's a, he's a eunuch um, which is really important because well angels have no sex angels uh -huh. often describe as being you know people say oh someone's died they're going to be, be an angel angels cherubim seraphims are separate entities from from human beings within the, you know Milton or or biblical text they are they're separate so they have they have no genitals or, or you know I guess cherubims do but But they don't need they like they're they're not they're nothing yeah. they're not male or female yeah. um, so they uh, so the, the fact that it's like a, it kind of has to be unique it can't have sort of doesn't need those desires all it needs is the desire for for blood um, so it kind of makes sense and then it's really interesting with when when um, her helper the sort of the Renfield character Hakan um, when he comes back to life. He's actually led by his his penis. He he's more in, um, satiated by by a sexual desire than by blood. Um, so that's kind of uh, that's interesting. Maybe that's why they have to castrate vampires because otherwise they they you know yeah <laughs> and yeah she didn't. okay um, last question. 
if someone wanted to turn you into a vampire, would you let them? Well, if they asked me, no. I don't think I'd want the descriptions of... Um, well, because it's described as a... It's an illness for for Eli, and she sort of puts up with it. But um, uh, it's it, the kind of the legends of of vampires and, and where it exists is really interesting. The the connection with the blood that a vampire needs from a human being to that of um, within you know um, like the East, Eastern and Latin churches. Um, of like you know blood being consumed by the blood of mm-hmm. Jesus being consumed by the people and the vampire consumes the blood of, of people they're a they're a parallel to to the saints and the angels um, but they're they're just a, a very interesting form of demonic possession um, so I don't I don't think I would necessarily choose that although they are they are cooler than a lot of uh, other devils. Devils. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, normally devils are cooler than angels. To be fair, I think, yeah, like yeah. they they seem to get a better press. So, so maybe <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I get invited to more parties if I was a vampire. Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so okay, much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. That I cannot forgive you. I can't forgive you, I won't forgive you for letting me let you go. I can't forgive you, I cannot forgive you, I won't forgive you for letting me let you go.